Thanks for joining us for this beginner Flutter tutorial series. We're going to download images from a URL list from the network and save it to the local Windows 10 pictures folder. So Flutter desktop application. Within the pictures folder, the application will automatically create a subdirectory called theta underscore images. And within there, initially we'll store um, a bunch of pictures from a free server Lorem Pixum. This is video number seven in this Flutter image download tutorial video series. If you want to follow along exactly with the code, go through the first six videos. Alternately, you can start off at this point or reference the code at uh, GitHub. The GitHub repository link is in the descriptions of the playlist. We'll first focus in on the network section of our application. Under the main lib folder for all the source code for the application, there is a existing folder called network. Within there, create a new file to download the images. Call the file download underscore images dot dart. In the new file, create a function, download images, and pass it the URL list. Create a for loop to loop through each of the items in the URL list. Initially, the URL list will only contain five URLs but you can of course make this longer when you generate the URL list. We're using a different method that was created in a previous video to, video to generate the URL list. Once the list is generated, pass it to this new function, loop through each of the items in the list. At each pass through the loop, create a URI, which we're gonna pass into the HTTP package. We're gonna use the HTTP get to pull the image down from the internet over into our local application. The download images function needs to be async. We're next gonna build out the section for the local storage to actually save the image data onto our local storage system. Create a new file for save underscore image dot dart and start building out the function to save the image to the local file system. We're gonna pass the image data that we got from the previous function that we just created into this new function. So there'll be one function to actually pull it from the network and then another function will save it to the disk. So this function will actually need to receive the image data that we just pulled down from the internet. In order to save the file to the specific portion of the Windows disk, we're gonna to need to get the path to store it to. In a previous video, we created a function to find out where the pictures folder is on the Windows machine. So that is get pictures path. With the location of the pictures folder on Windows, we can then start building out the file handle to save the data to that specific area. To get the specific path of the each individual file, we're actually going to create a subdirectory within the that pictures folder on Windows and we'll call it theta underscore image. So to combine the different components, right? So there's the pictures path for the pictures folder. There's this uh, theta underscore join, which will be a subfolder in there so that all your pictures for this one application will be together. And then there's a specific file name. Uh, for simplicity, we'll pass it in from the function uh, that calls the save image. That when it downloads it from the internet, will generate a, a specific file name at that point. Join the pictures path, so that Windows pictures folder 
with the folder in the pictures folder, and finally the file name. So there's three different pieces that we're joining together here. The file name we're going to pass into this function. We'll call the name of the file that we're going to save image name and we'll pass it in from the function that calls this. In addition to creating the path here with the join, we're also going to check to see whether the theta underscore images folder, that subfolder already exists. Uh, if it doesn't exist, we're going to create it. So we're going to have to change this thing to create. And because we want to create that folder, if the path doesn't exist, we're going to set recursive to true. This will create the folder if it doesn't already exist. If the join didn't actually import the path package, uh, you may have to type it in manually to import the path package. Once you have the file set up that you want to save the image file into, you're going to need to use that. Uh, so we send it to variable theta image to write as bytes. When we pull it down from the internet with the HTTP get command, we're gonna pull down a set of bytes for the image. So we're gonna write it as bytes. And that is gonna be in the image data dot body bytes. So image data is what we're passing over from the other function when we call up the save image. We're gonna call the save image function from the download image function. After every time in the loop, every time it uh, pulls the image down, then we'll save it. To keep it simple, we'll just use a simple counter as the name of the file. So we're gonna start with a counter at one. The first image we download and save will be uh, image one. In the main for loop in the download image is a function. That's where we're going to put the save image and we have to pass the save image, the individual data, data image data for that one image that we just pulled down from the internet, as well as the file, the file name to save. So the file name, we're just going to use the counter. Once we have the file name set up, we next need to connect the download image uh, code to the get image button. So go into the get image button file, and then within there add download images and pass it the URL list. After you have that function in there, then run your program, press the button and wow, it works. In the get image button file, create a function that will update the, ch the change notifier this update response widget here, and it's going to get a message that we'll put out to the response window. So this function name will receive a message. And then when it receives the message, it will update the response notifier. And then it will notify the widget, uh, the response window widget that it needs to be updated function that we just created is called update status and we're going to pass it to download images in the download images file in this function have it accept this update status function so it's a function that it's accepting and then run the update status function here so you can pass a function another function and then pass it the string that you want to appear in the bottom of the response window. You can change the style of the text widget that's in this update status function to match the style that you want. I'm gonna use a 30 point font just to make it a little easier to read. Let's retest our application with Windows File Explorer 
on the left hand side and you can see boom it just suddenly populates it with images it's working fantastic